For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Monday morning, September the 2nd, 1985. Final service of the Labor Day weekend teaching and deliverance seminar being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Should this tape for any reason be defective, please explain and return for replacement. Lord, now we lift up our nation today. Father, we come and bring, and, and bring the sins of our nation and ask, Lord, for, for cleansing by your Spirit, Lord, of the sins of this nation. We come against the powers of Antichrist. We come against the power, the lethargy. We come against the, 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 the God of pleasure in this nation, Lord. Oh, God, the, place, the God of mammon and pleasure. We bind up that spirit in the name of the Lord. We rebuke that power in Jesus' name. Father, we speak a healing to this nation by your spirit, Lord. Father, we know that your judgments have to come in the land, that it's necessary because where sin abounds, there also does the judgment of the Lord abound. And your judgments, Lord, have to come. Or you're not a true God. And your judgments, Lord, are the other areas of the world with Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, and the other places, Nineveh, that you judged, Lord, uh, uh, Pompeii, that you judged, Lord, these areas. God, uh, we know that you're not a just God if judgment doesn't come. But, Father, we thank you that in the middle of your judgments, men shall call on the name of the Lord, and they shall know that thou art the Lord God Almighty, and there's none other besides thee. Father, I thank you today. I praise you for it. Father, ask for wisdom for our president, divine guidance in his behalf. Lord, give us, raise us up, men, follow the Holy Ghost, and that will declare and make Jesus Lord, and they'll speak forth and say, Thus saith the Lord, and it shall be so. Father, we bind up the powers of Antichrist, the powers of the Illuminati. We bind up the powers of the Federal Reserve System. We rebuke these powers in the name of the Lord. We curse these things. Father, we know that, you're, that, that, that in your time that they will crumble and fall and come to naught. Your, your, your word says so, that Babylon the great has fallen. And, Father, that day is upon us when Babylon the great shall fall and the financial systems of the world shall come to naught. Oh, God, we thank you that, it, that, 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 that in the midst of it you shall have uh, your hand over your people and your protection shall rest upon them. And there shall be light in Goshen when there's darkness in the rest of the land. Father, we thank you for that light. That is the light of the Lord Jesus. And we praise you for it. Father, we thank you that, that your protection rests upon us. And you'll be with us wherever we are as we put our faith and our trust in thee. And I thank you for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah 2 and 3. Let's all sing and sing. Come and let us go up to the mountain of our God unto the house of the Lord. You remember it, don't you? You don't in Isaiah 2 and 3? I just bless you in the name of Jesus this morning. I tell you, I'm so full. I'm the only horse I'm not full. You know, when you get full, you just can't say no more, do no more. And you've made us full today. All the time that we've been here, we're going to do it in the key of F. F. Come and let us go to the mountain of our God, to the house of the Lord. Come and let us go to the mountain of our God, unto the house of the Lord. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. And the Lord shall go forth out of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Come and let us go to the mountain of our God, unto the house of the Lord. Come and let us go to the mountain of our God, unto the house of the Lord. And He will teach us of His ways, and we will walk in His path, and the Lord. 
the whip of the Lord from Jerusalem. Come and let us go to the mountain of our God, unto the house of the Lord. Come and let us go to the mountain of our God, unto the house of the Lord. And He will teach us of His way, and we will walk in His path, and the law shall go forth. And the words of the Lord from Jerusalem, and the words of the Lord from Jerusalem, and the words of the Lord from Jerusalem. God's going to make a preacher out of him yet. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I talked to my wife last night on the telephone. I don't have you heard in the. Los Angeles and San Francisco area, the Night Stalker. Yeah. They caught him last night. They caught him. And the thing they found out, rock music, drugs, witchcraft, and satanic worship. This is what's the contributing factor, and he wore a lot of black. The thing, because when I left home, uh, I was being scolded because I didn't put extra locks on the doors. And I left the angels of the Lord is, is guarding my, my home. And when she said, feathers, feathers, I, I thought this is it. <laughs> but I would like to let you take home something. What has sustained, sustained me and my family? This prayer. A lot of prayer. And family prayer. I had my daughter and my three grandchildren, my wife and I. We were lax at times, but we would get up and before the children went to school we would pray every morning whether scripture whatever it was every morning whether it's three minutes five minutes whatever time it was allowed we had morning prayer and this sustained us because we've gone through a lot and one prayer that you may take home and we would anoint each other with oil and we shall got this prayer and it's scriptural and say we would anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for joy and gladness of heart and divine healing, in the shed blood of Jesus, on the top of your head, to the soles of your feet, in the healing light and making you whole, in spirit, soul, and body. You take this home, and when your children are asleep, anoint them. If you have an opportunity, try family prayer. Another thing is, especially you men, and women too, but especially the head of the household. Get in your chamber and pray. Pray by yourself. Get in your closet and pray. And be humble. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Be humble. Because pride was one of my, my faults. Pride. And he has humbled me. He is my Lord. He is my God. He is my Savior. Pray and pray in the Spirit. Spirit and Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. And He sustained me and He brought me here. I thank the Lord for it. And thank you. <laughs> it's amazing what praising will do. Amen. Amen. And it's also amazing what God's doing with these Catholic people. Amen. Oh, he's changing all of us. Washing all that idolatry out of us. Jesus is in the restoring business. And that's, see, that's what the Lord told us that this place was to be. You listen to the tape of the Ark, called the Arkansas Story, you'll find that that's what God told us this place was place where, fa where, where families and, and all could come, and a place where even they could come and stay for a little while. We're not able here to take families and all that and keep them and do that. You know, when we're here and have the camp meetings, we, we take our time and concentrate on the prayer and the deliverance and the ministry. Of course, when this, as soon as this meeting's over tomorrow, well, we've got uh, 48 hours of work to get done and 24 tomorrow. So we can't 
take the time we take here these days and pray with people. But yet we do. We do. But yet we can't open the place up to that. If you need help, we, if we want you to come and expect you to come during the camp meetings. And uh, you'll receive. Now, Thanksgiving, we'll have a big turkey dinner here, Thanksgiving Day. And then the last service that weekend will be Sunday morning. Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning. Then the holiday weekend, we'll have a turkey dinner here. I think it's Wednesday afternoon, Christmas Day. Wednesday afternoon, or whatever day it, it is, we'll have a, a, a turkey dinner. And then we'll start the first service that night. And it will, and those services will go through New Year's Eve, what's night service. And uh, so, as the Lord allows you to come, why, come and praise the Lord with us and help. And now, uh, what I mean, help, uh, I appreciate your finances. That's when we need it, we've got to have it. But help in prayer. And when you need help for deliverance, or somebody here will pray with you, and when you're here and somebody's sitting beside you and needs help, just put your hand over on, on them and, and, and enter in and pray for them. And if, uh, if uh, Irma or I or Pat or somebody thinks you get out of line, we'll come over and lay our hand on you nice and enter in and pray with you. We, uh, we're not going to jump down your throat uh, unless something gets real bad, and then we'll try not to do it in front of everybody. Sometimes we have to talk to some people, and uh, it's necessary because there's things that are right, and there's things that are wrong, and there's things that are decently and in order, and there's things that are, that are uh, uh, honorable unto the Lord, and then there's things that uh, cause dishonor if we... Uh, uh, aren't, you know. So it's just necessary. So, but we want the presence and the glory of the Lord to flow and move and that His presence will go home with you and that you will be able to be a deliverer in the house of Zion no matter whether you're a thousand miles this way or 2,500 that away, you know. It doesn't matter. Just that, that, the, that God will move in your heart and life and that we'll walk holy and righteous before Him and be a, a holy people. Satan tries everything he can to change that, but uh, we have to fight the battle every day. The book table, we'll take it down this afternoon just as soon as the lunch is over. So if you want to get any books or if you want to order the tape, now one of the greatest ministries in the last uh, 15 years is through uh, cassette tapes and the real tape. That has spread more gospel, I believe, than any other invention and I praise God every day for, for tape recorders and the man who invented them because it had to be. He had to be of God. God had to show him that. Many inventions the Lord has shown to people over the years. So be sure and order the tapes that you want. Did you decide on uh, how many tapes? I know last night must have been about three tapes. And we will, we will do a synopsis on them and put it in the next magazine. Yes, those praise and worship tapes. If you're feeling low, the enemy you feel is coming in against you, you put on a tape. We do all the time. Many times I wake up in the middle of the night and, and put on a tape. Many times we get up in the night and have a battle with Satan here. You know, you heard about that army that comes, comes along. And he comes in here quite often. And we have to get up in battle. And come against the enemy. And and uh, we will have lunch here as soon as this service is over for all those that are going to stay. And then anyone who, who can't catch their bus or plane today, uh, we will probably move you downstairs out of the dorms because it's about $50 a day just up there for that air conditioner to be running. And you understand that. We have some rooms back here that's being vacated. So... We will move you downstairs if your bus is leaving tomorrow or whenever it's leaving. We do appreciate all of you, all of you. It's, it's just wonderful to meet all of you new ones that's never been here before. And uh, every camp meeting, we have a lot of the ones that come all the time and then a lot of the new ones. And the Lord just seems to just rotate, and he sends whom he will. He sends whom he will. And Glenn and I and, and the staff here, we pray all the time for God to send his anointed ministries here. We've had a few ministries here that, that hurt the work of God. Hurt the work of God. Now, last week we had an experience. I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, I was at town 
Glenn was back here in the back praying with a, another minister, and him were praying. This man and woman came in, and uh, three children, and they told Patty they had a message for us. Well, that's all right. You know, it sounded all right. So she had them wait in here. It was cool in here. And I came home, and I came uh, in and talked to them, and, and they said they had a message. They were led here by God, said that they never uh, knew about this place, and God showed it to them in a vision. And uh, they talked, talked on and on, the man did, and the, the three children were just alert. They were just eating up every word this man said. And, and his wife was, too. He just, they were just very intent on what he was telling me. And he said, uh, we stopped over across the street. We was in town two days looking for this place. We didn't know the name of it or anything, he said. And uh, he said, stopped over across the street to get my radio work done. And I asked the man, you know anything? He said, by that time, the Lord had showed me Reverend Miller. He said, you know Reverend Miller? And the man across the street at the radio shop, he said, well, sure, right, right down there at that campground. So the man said, when I walked in, this is the place I saw in the vision. So uh, I said, fine. And uh, we talked a little more. And he said, now, now the Lord showed me Mr. Miller. I said, well, what did he show you about him? He said, well, he's a tall man. And he's pudgy kind of around the middle. Middle aged, Brad. He says he's about 45 years old. He gave me all this, see? And all the time, though, the bells were going off inside of me. I knew something was wrong. And so when he finished, I said, Well, my husband will be 65 right away in his next birthday. He weighs 115 pounds, maybe, <laughs> on his fattest days. And, and the woman just, <gasps> she just was startled. Everything the man had said was a lie. And all the time he's lying. I, I watch people very closely. I watch your facial expressions and everything. And, and uh, I knew he was lying. He knew about us probably when he left Tennessee or Oklahoma or wherever he'd come from. I really had my doubts that that man and those the women and children had been with that man very many days. I really don't think so. And, and walking in the spirit, this man, that's... That's what we all need to do. Walking in the Spirit. So we know what spirit people are when they, when they come into a meeting. Are they here for good? Are they here to worship the Lord? Or are they here to cause strife and contention? And, and to, like Brother Pittman said, to tear up and destroy. See, the enemy comes to kill and to destroy, doesn't he? And he likes to destroy the work of God. And I've seen many churches split and all kinds of horrible things. I'm glad we've had 50 years in Pentecost. We'd have never been able to handle this place otherwise. Never in our... We would have ran away a long time ago. And, and sometimes I feel like running away now, to tell you the truth. You know? But I know we can't. My little, one of my little grandsons, he said to me one day when I wasn't feeling too happy about everything, he says, Nanny, you have to live here the rest of your life. I said, I think so. <laughs> he said, oh... <laughs> but you know the Lord puts in us the love and the abilities and the calling and his spirit if we seek the Lord we need to seek the Lord constantly and all of you can seek the Lord for this place that God will send in the right ministry well needless to say then when Glenn came out this man told Glenn and then but, but we sat there and talked and he wanted to talk to the body that night we was having church on Thursday night he said I'd like to talk to the body here and I, I'm bold We've had too many, you, you mean to say all of our life, all of our life is in here. All the years of our life, and I'm not going to let anybody just walk in here when I know something's wrong. I said, look, we don't let people just come down off of the wall and speak in here. What are you going to tell the body here tonight? And he said, well, it's very secret and, you know, blah, blah. But we had them, we started praying. Our staff started praying. And that man never got to say a word that night. I never got to say a word. I feel sorry for the women and the children. But every one of you, there's only one scripture I've got to give you this morning. Hold that fast which thou hast, and let no man take your crown. Say that. Hold that fast which I have. Let no man take thy crown. The Lord spoke that to me back there at the table. and I, I, My Bible was up here, and I looked it up in, in uh, Strong's to find out. It's, it's Revelation 3.11. Hold that fast. This is precious. The anointing in this place is precious, and we guard it. We guard it. 
The anointing in these ministries is precious. And every one of you, the anointing, guard it. It abides in you. The anointing abides in you. And, and don't let any, shall I say, screwball lead you astray. Follow Jesus. Don't follow any man. If you give, uh, lean on the arms of flesh, the Lord says, I will put a curse on you. That's in Malachi, isn't it? I will put a curse on you. God puts curses on us. He wants us to shape up. I mean, tediously repent of every little sin. It's sin. The wages of sin is death. Sin brings death to us. As often as I can remember to do it, I say, Lord, I don't want this wages in me anymore. I don't want this death in me anymore. And I start repenting and commanding death to go out of me and life to come in. And I think if we'll do more of that, it will keep keep us healthy and young, and we don't have to be senile and old. Some days I'd like to sit in a rocking chair and, and, and walk around in my house in a robe all day, and Glenn hates that. He wants women to get up and dress. But, you know, you know, when you get up and get out of bed, some days I just say, oh, I can't get up. And, and you remember that man in the full gospel that they used to beat up on the Berkeley uh, steps all the time? Uh, Holy Hubert. Those, those hippies had knocked every tooth out of his head and, and beat him up, broke his ribs even. And one time they took him to the hospital and was almost dead. Next morning, the Lord says, get up, Holy. Get up, Holy. He says, I can't get up. And the Lord says, yes, you can. Sometimes I say, I can't get up. And if I don't say it, yes, you can, Glenn will say it, yes, you can. <laughs> Every morning we're down here at 8 o'clock for the 8 o'clock prayer meeting and then the office work. And I praise God for all the office helpers that the Lord has sent. We used to have only men here, only boys here to help. And the Lord started sending in some girls to help. And I do appreciate all of them. And, uh, and it's such a help to me. And they take lots of work off of me. And I, I did fall down coming in that back kitchen door and, and did something to my leg and knee. And uh, I've got lots of legs that run for me now. So I don't, I don't have to run up and down the stairs so much. And I appreciate all those little things. See, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Don't be a haphazard Christian. Do it with all your might. Uh, and don't gripe about it. That's right. Whatever the Lord gives you to do. You know, you know for 13 years that we worked for nothing full gospel businessmen at those tables and paid them to be there. And look, we wouldn't have met all you people had we not, most of you, we met at full gospel convention. I had more fun behind that book table, even though we'd go in there at world conventions, we used to go in on Monday morning and, and never really sit down at a restaurant to eat or anything. We ate standing up, whatever they brought me, I ate. And we were there till the lights went out. If they made the lights go out at one o'clock in the morning, that's when we and the Lord just gave us strength. People would come by. I remember once Tommy Osborne came by, and he was talking to me. We got a 1920 horseless carriage, nine-passenger station wagon that Glenn cherishes up there. And, and uh, uh, so Osborne used to uh, collect these cars. And so he was talking to me about this car. And while he was talking to me, this fire was just coming out onto me and strengthened me. I could feel it. I said, Oh, brother, just stand here a while. I'm getting so much strength and rest. He says, just take all you want, sister. There's lots more where that's coming from. <laughs> and you know, all of you strengthen us. All of you strengthen us. And when you pray at home, you strengthen us. So don't forget to pray for us. And and, and pray that rest will come to us. We're, we're really very tired. The summer has been a hard summer because we've had lots of youth camps in here, which requires a lot of strength, too. But your prayers are important. I can be sitting at my desk and all of a sudden the power of God will just hover over me and I just stop and I just sit. Just like this. My eyes closed. Just sit while he just ministers to me. And it's because of some of your prayers, see? So when you see us, when you think about us, that's the Holy Spirit trying to get you to pray for us. You know, sometimes, sometimes right in the meeting the Lord will show me somebody and I know that we're to start praying for them right then. And, and you need to pray for, for these men that's on the road, Brother, Brother Pittman and, and, uh, uh, and all of the ministries. And this singer, this, this jumping jack singer and accordion player and you musicians, 
We just appreciate you so much. We just want you to come back at all the services. And and the Lord just loves. There's more joy in this camp meeting than we've ever had and more love. And the other day I said, I said to some of them, it is incredible how people can function and praise and worship and have all this demonic power. Don't you think that's a miracle? That is a miracle of God that he allows us, the mercy of God, to, to praise him and worship him. And then when it comes time for deliverance, these evil spirits go. And then Lord Jesus comes in. And next time you come, well, you know, usually the first night there's such battles going on. Because everybody's coming from every direction, you know. And, uh, and we can feel the enemy. But he doesn't last too long. He doesn't last too long around here. I told some of them, I think... I think the enemy would be afraid to come in here. <laughs> you know? I mean, common sense would tell you, but he doesn't give up, see? So don't let any man take your crown. You follow Jesus. Follow his word. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the book of Acts. You, you know, you can sit down and read several books of the Bible every day. Just start reading it. If you don't understand, the part you don't understand, just go right on. And all of a sudden, one thing will stop, and you'll see it. And it will just come alive. It'll come alive in you. I, I want... Uh, Tommy, were you going to preach or say anything? All right, come on. Well, uh, then why don't you come and do it, and then when we get through, I know they're wanting to leave. This couple right here are going as missionaries. I think we ought to pray over them and for them. They're going to San Salvador. You know, one time I, I went through um, the scriptures, and um, I looked up all the references where Paul asked the different churches to pray for him. And today, sitting there, I feel to exhort you to remember the ministries that, that come into this place, like me and Brother Goodson and Brother Pittman and many others that, that probably you know. How many will make a commitment to the Lord to pray for the ministries? Oh, amen. amen. Intercession. Amen. Yes. Oh, now, look in Second Thessalonians. I want to read one scripture, and I'll just shut up and sit down. Well, no, no that's, all I, that's all I have, okay? I, if I have more, I'd, I'd give it to you. Uh, Second Thessalonians. Well, I have a lot, but I mean, I just feel <laughs> led to read this one. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 1. And what's the first word? Finally. Paul is wrapping up everything he said to this church. And he's, this is the second letter. And he says, Finally, brethren, Christians, pray for us. Now, if you read Thessalonians, you see that Paul, Silvanus, that's Silas, and Timotheus, or Timothy, worked together. And uh, they were all uh, ministers of God. But he said, finally, brethren, pray for us that, here's the reason, that the word of the Lord may have free course, and that means to actually run freely, to run freely or to go out to others, and be what? Glorified even as it is with you. So he's saying, pray for the ministry that the word can go out to others, be glorified as it were uh, with you, Thessalonians. Okay, verse 2, and that we, the ministry, may be delivered. From unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But look at the third verse. Here's a promise to you that will pray for the ministry, that the word of God will go out to others. But the word, Lord is faithful, who shall establish, that means strengthen you, and keep you from evil. And that's from the evil one. And so you have a promise. If you'll pray for the ministry, that they can take the word of God to others, and it can be glorified and reached out to others. God will keep you from evil. How many want that? Amen. Amen. Let's do our part. God will do his part. May the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, pray for Brother Sam and his wife, dear Lord, and we commit them to you, Lord God. We thank you for their dedication, their sacrifice, and their faithfulness to you, Lord. God, we thank you today that your hand is upon them. You're going to lead them and guide them, mighty God. We ask the Holy Spirit to watch over them, to open up the way, Lord God, financially, Lord, and in every way that's involved. God, open up the way for my brethren, Lord. Lord, give them favor with you and with men. We thank you, Lord God. Keep them from the wicked one, Lord God. Go before them, mighty God. Show them your plan, your purpose, Lord God. Reveal yourself to them in a mighty way, Lord. Let them know Jesus that they've never known him, Lord. And let faith come. Let faith come, Lord God. Amen. To believe the Lord. Amen. For the things that they need, God. Cause others to intercede and pray for them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
God's going to use you in healing. God's going to use you might in healing. And also, I feel led to tell you, to study in the Scriptures everything on the word trumpet. And trumpets. Really make a study of it and let the Holy Spirit open that up because the trumpet speaks of a message from God. But I feel led to tell you that, okay? But you're going to use you in the healing ministry. Amen. Lord, I bind the spirits of infirmity. Amen. Yes, bind every spirit of, of infirmity and the diseases of those of that area. Amen. Hallelujah. I rebuke them and put a wall of fire about my sister oh, in the name of the Lord and about Sam too in Jesus' name. I put a wall of fire about her. I bind the spirits of infirmity from her in Jesus' name. I break the powers of it from the world in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Have you been there before? You have them. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Well, I have been very impressed with one thing that I have observed in this particular Labor Day convention. Now, I'm blessed to have been coming here for about 10 years and ministering in music. Uh, I don't get to come to every convention they have, but I've been coming. And I have been so impressed with this one thing I've observed this particular time that I wanted to share it with you for learning, okay? And especially any young potential ministers, I definitely want you to learn this today. And I'm in charge of the Esco Jubilee, and I know I've observed this there, too, among ministers. There is a scripture that says, Know them that labor among you. Are you aware of that word? Okay, we're learning. And this was why it was very necessary last night that Brother Pittman name names from the pulpit, even though he didn't want to. But it was very necessary because that word says that, that we're to know them that labor among you. Also, there is the word teaches, be courteous. Did you know that's in the word, black and white, be courteous? And one thing that I have been extremely impressed in this particular convention that I've observed, the three ministers that were here, their common courtesy they had for one another was very impressive to me. Did y'all notice that? Brother Cook just several times would say, thank you, Brother Pittman. Just common courtesy. Now, you may not think that amounts to very much, but it really does. Brother Goodson had the courtesy toward the other brothers. Brother Pittman, just a gentleman in every way. Weren't you impressed with his gentleman way? I was. I'm sorry to tell you, I have been here when some of the brethren were not courteous to one another. And I've also observed Glenn and Irma were wise enough not to invite them back. And I, I thanked them, but they didn't. Amen. Amen. But I, I just had to share that with you. Now, all of you observe that, that we ought to know them that labor among us, and we ought to be courteous. And young ministers, you learn to be courteous to other ministers. We've had some ministers come in here, big-name ministers, had a beautiful word to share with us, but they were not courteous to the other minister that was on the list. And he'd come in here and sit down here on this end of the car, on the seat, and would not go over and sit by the other brethren. And when that other brethren was ministering, guess where he was? Up in the room asleep, or off somewhere shopping. He did not have a common courtesy to come in here and listen to somebody else. 
Now, y'all, I miss. I know that don't sound real spiritual, but when it gets in your spirit, it will be a spiritual enlightening to you. Okay? Thank you, Brother Miller. You know, now, I don't know if uh, Brother Goodson, I'm sure, is not, and I don't think even Tommy is aware, because we felt their spirit. But we have a letter that we give to every minister who comes here to minister. We supp- I'm supposed to. I, that's my rule. Now, I don't know if I ever gave one to Tommy or not. don't think I did. But we, we do have. And one of the requirements on that is that they attend all the services. Now, these I've not had to tell them about because they're faithful in the house of the Lord, see. But there are some ministries who, like she said, only come to hear their self. And the rest of the time, they go play golf or go up to the mall or something. And that is an abomination to God. See? We, I have, we have requirements on the letter that to those. And the Lord, another thing the Lord has promised us, and that is that he will bring us Ministers from underneath the rocks, so to speak. You know, the, the people that God uses, or that he's really using, are unknown. That's right. That really. Those who the anointing and the glory of the Lord rests on are people from the desert. Amen. And those are the men where God's blessing rests. So, the Lord told us that we would find those of his under the rocks. And there's a lot of ministries who... Uh, would like to come here or have even been here and would like to come back and I just don't invite them back or haven't invited them in the first place I'd rather just Irma and I were here than to have some of these who are propagating in a way their own gospel you know so that's not the Lord give us wisdom pray that the Lord give us wisdom that his ministers will be those that's here to minister Tommy, I don't feel you're really through talking to me this morning. I didn't see. I thought you were going to leave while we're going. Since you haven't left, I think you still have something to say. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Well, let's pray. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your word, Lord. It's still a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our pathway, Lord. And so, Father, today, God, just by your spirit, minister to and through us, Lord. Anoint us and help us today. Encourage us today, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the scripture that our sister said a while ago um, in 1 Thessalonians 5. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 5. And let's look at verses, um, look at verse 12. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Now, I don't know if you know it or not, but those that are really in the ministry, there is a labor, and it's a labor of love. Now, turn back just a second. A scripture's coming to me. 1 Corinthians 9, just a second. How many know there's responsibility with ministry? Great responsibility with ministry. Now, look at verse 16, what Paul said, 1 Corinthians 9, 16. He said, For though I preach the gospel, and thank God for those that are preaching the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is what? Laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, Paul said, if I preach not the gospel. And I believe if we're called to preach the gospel, we need to preach the gospel. Amen? How many know that ministries get sidetracked sometimes? I was told when I was in Bible school of a man who was a great soul winner, and he was a preacher, great preacher and winning many to Jesus, and he got sidetracked into those um, things that, you know, they claim to see, you know, at night, which I believe is demonic. What do you call them, those um, flying saucers? Yeah. He got off into that thing and, and, you know, just took him completely from the ministry. But Paul here said, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will... 
a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me. Now look at verse 18. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. You know, there are some people that will not come, we'll say, to a place like this or to other places unless they can get a certain amount of offering. You know that? But you know, I believe that's an abomination in the sight of the Lord. I believe God has called us to walk by faith and live by faith, and that God is our source. And we don't go someplace for uh, whether... You know, there's some ministers will not go to small places because they think, well, I won't get any offering. But you know, if you don't get an offering... I heard a brother, Brother Cronquist say one time, he went into 15 places, never got an offering. And I believe it was the 16th place he went into. God just blessed him abundantly with, with a big offering. Well, how many know you've got to walk by faith whether you get anything or not? Amen. And God took care of it. But he said, For though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And of course, he became a Jew to those who were Jews and so forth. Now, let's go back to Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5. He said again to us, though. He said, Brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord. There's got to be those that are over some of us in the Lord. And it's in the Lord, isn't it? It's not domination. It's not, not domineering. But it's over you in the Lord. And what? Admonish you. Now, how many know that the word admonish can even be a slight rebuke? Amen? Exhortation is very strong sometimes, isn't it? Turning from wrong to right, from error to truth. Then he said in verse 13, And to esteem them very highly. How though? In love for their works sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now, I want to show you a few scriptures here. Turn to, to Timothy. I think it's um, 2 Timothy 1. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy 1. How many know that sometimes there is a reproach of being around certain ministries? I mean, God's ministry. Amen? In 2 Timothy 1, look at verse 8, what Paul says. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me. Now, Paul is talking to young Timothy, isn't he? So he said, Don't be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. <laughs> Paul was certainly a jailbird, wasn't he? He was in jail a lot. But how many know his spirit left his body a lot of times? But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. All right, come on down now in this chapter. We come on down in verse, look in verse 15. This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. And then he named several guys there. So, so he said there were many that turned from him in Asia. Now look at verse 16 though. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft or often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my king. So here's a man that sought Paul out. He was not ashamed to be associated with the Apostle Paul, even though Paul was in jail. Then he said, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out. He searched me out diligently, eagerly, and found me. The Lord granted to him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And how many things he ministered to me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Now that today, there may have been pressure, brother, on you not to come to this camp meeting. Maybe from others. You know, I've heard all kinds of things that goes on down here in Hot Springs before I ever came. <laughs> Amen? And, yeah, I bet. <laughs> but, you know, you know, anymore when people are cutting each other down, really blasting people, I like to kind of find out for myself what it's all about. Because it says, woe unto those that speak well of you. Isn't that right? Amen. Yet here was a man in jail, and yet Onesiphorus found the time to go search him out, find him out, and to bless Paul and minister to Paul. There are times Brother and Sister Miller are down. There are times that, that they're on the attack and we must remember them and pray for them. And pray for, uh, pray for this place right here. And every place I've ever known where, where, you know, deliverance is very strong. I mean, I'm telling you, the devil really attacks the people. And so we need to hold them up. Praise the Lord. Now, let me give you another scripture. You still want me to share a little more? All right, good. Now, turn to uh, Philippians 3, 4. No, excuse me, Colossians. Colossians 4. Colossians 4. And how many want to be an intercessor? I want to show you, here was an intercessor in this church that Paul fought a lot of. In Ephesians, uh, Colossians 4, excuse me, verse 12, Epaphras, 
He pastored with a minister who is one of you. And I like that. He's one of you. How many know there's no big one? We're all one in Christ. He pastored to as one of you a servant of Christ, a servant of the anointed one. Salute of you always, laboring, laboring, laboring fervently for you. That's for the church. How? In prayers. And notice the word prayers is plural. Different kind of praying, which we won't go into. That you may stand, church, perfect and complete. That's actually mature, full age, in all the will of God. So here was a man praying for this church to be complete, perfect, and mature in God. For I bear him record that he, he pastors, has a great zeal for you and for them that are in what? How many know we're living in the layout of the in church age? How many know God's got some intercessors? And I, even though we read about Laodicea, brethren, even though it is a lukewarm church, I want you to also know, Jesus said to that same church, that he that overcometh, amen, will be able to sit with him on the throne, even if he overcame and sat down on the throne. And I believe there's going to be a people in this Laodicean age that's going to overcome, that's going to sit down with Jesus on the throne of authority and power with our God and bring deliverance to humanity. We think we've seen deliverance yesterday. That's just a small scale compared to what we're going to see. Amen? Because upon Mount Zion is going to be deliverance and holiness. And there's going to be those that possess their possessions. Amen? It's going to be faith. Brethren, as I said before, there are two things I believe that open my heart up for truth. We don't have all the truth, but we can have a love for the truth. And, and what will open you up for truth, I believe, is praying much in the Spirit and submitting to deliverance. And, of course, staying in the Word of God and letting God direct you. Like, you know, you don't have a right to choose the Scriptures you want to read. The Holy Spirit needs to lead you into your study. People ask me, well, how do you study? I study the way the Holy Spirit directs you. I don't have any set pattern. Now, you may have a pattern. I don't know. But I don't. The Holy Ghost comes to me, He speaks to me, and He takes me into my studies, and I follow Him. Praise the Lord. I mean, no, we can't bend this book to our doctrine. We go into this book to get the doctrine. Amen? Now, let me give you another scripture. Philippians uh, chapter 2. I want to give you a couple, two more scriptures or so here. And we're going to have lunch here in a few minutes. Philippians chapter 2. How many appreciate the good food here? Amen. I sure like that roast beef the other night. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Enjoy the musician, Brother Jay and our sister here and our sister Billy and Bill. Billy been blessing Brother Jay. Brother Jay is from Oklahoma way. Hallelujah. Years ago. Amen. He was back to Oklahoma still like. <laughs> Philippians chapter chapter two. All right, look in verses I'm wrong, chapter four. Chapter four. There are four important men in this chapter. Jesus, Paul, Timothy, and Epaphroditus. Now look in this chapter. I'm looking for my verse. Find it. Hallelujah. About Timothy. Somebody find it for me. Right? About Timothy. Chapter 2. I'm sorry. I'll get it right. We'll get it right. Verse 19. Philippians 2, 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may be of a good comfort when I want. Know your faith, for I have no man like-minded. Like-minded. How many know that's the mind of Christ? Or with similar spirit mindset, who will naturally care for your state or your welfare. Paul said, I don't have anybody else like Timothy. He became an apostle of God later on. I'm showing the scripture where he's an apostle. And yet Paul said, I have no other man. Verse 21. For all seek their own. And brethren, I see it on every hand. I see ministries who, who want to build up themselves. They don't care for others many times. But if you look at this first, I'm telling you, Jesus is going to reach out to you. For all seek their own, Jesus Christ, but you know the proof of him. He's a proven one. That as a son with the father, that's Timothy with Paul, he has served with me in the gospel. Any way you slice it, brethren, I'll tell you, you've got to be a servant first. Amen? 
I mean, know that Joshua was a, I, I, now, you may not like this term, second fiddle to Moses for many, many years. Yes. Until Moses died, of course, he took him over. But he had to serve under the leader that God had, didn't he? And how many know that Elisha poured water on the hands of Elijah? You see, I see many starting the ministry, and they want everything for them all at once. But it doesn't work that way. Amen? So there is a time to serve under those that are over in the Lord, and God will bring us. How many know there's an impartation that comes to us from other ministries? I mean, a good impartation. You know, I'm not talking about their mannerism and, you know, the way they do things. But I'm talking about there is an impartation of truth and things from God comes through the ministry that we need. And so right here he said, I don't have another man like this man. Amen? For all seek their own, uh, which are not the things of Jesus. But you know the proof of him that as a son of the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. And you know, you like to know, brethren, that you can trust and that you can recommend to places like this and other places. Amen? That you can actually know that they will not come and hurt the sheep. I heard a man teach one time, the reason some ministries cannot get in certain places is this, is just this. Here's what it is. They will hurt the sheep. God will not allow it. Amen? One other scripture now I want to give to you in close. First Tim two scriptures. First Timothy four, they're both in this chapter. First Timothy second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. And look in verses uh him. Now, this scripture must have grieved Paul's heart when he had to write this. In verse 10, 2 Timothy 4, 10, For Demas, now Demas was another minister, Demas hath forsaken me. I mean, in the time of war, those kind of people used to get shot. And how many know we're in a warfare? A spiritual warfare. And Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having love this present world. What is the world again? Let's say it. The lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And so Paul said, he left me, he forsook me. And because he loved this world. Now come on down in this chapter. Look in verse 14. The first word is Alexander. Alexander means a man dependent. Alexander the copper smith did me much evil, Paul said. Did me much evil. What did we read a while ago? That if you pray for the ministry, that God would keep them for wicked, from wicked and unreasonable men. Isn't that right? And Paul said, this man did him much evil. The Lord reward him, not Paul, according to his work. Of whom be thou where also. Now Paul is warning here to watch out for this man. Didn't be thou where also. For he hath greatly what withstood our words, or another uh, margin says, our preaching, and that is a game saying anti Christ spirit. That stood against the preaching of the Apostle Paul. And he said, He's done me much evil. My, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men, what? Forsook me. I pray God it may not be laid to the charge, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. That by the preaching, uh, by, by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Thank God. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me, keep me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't forget to pray for the ministries. Amen? May the Lord bless you real good. Praise God. Let's just give the Lord a good clap down. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Cook. Well, I don't have anything to add. So oh, just say the Lord bless us all. Amen. I got lunch ready for us, and we're going to have lunch. Father, we thank you for the, your presence that, that is with us. We thank you for your presence to go with these as they travel. Father, we thank you for the food. Make it health and strength to us. Renew it as the eagle. We bless with those who prepared it. We thank you for making us the health and strength that we need in our physical bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.
lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.